Hi and welcome back to the Sword Study series. I'm Nick Thomas at the Academy of Historical Fencing and today we're going to be taking a look at this absolutely beautiful silver hallmark hilted grenadier officer's sword. But before we do, I'd just like to say that um, this series is going to change just a little bit for the next few videos. Uh, the reason is, is that so far I've been covering my own personal collection and I've been able to do that in kind of my own time um, as best suited me and relax and do it at my own pace. But I've got a collection of swords in right now that um, are actually belonging to a friend and I'm going to be sending them on to him in the next day or two. And it's about 10 beautiful British swords, some of which are similar to ones I've got to kind of duplicates or different derivatives of things I've got. And some of them are just unique swords that I don't have at all. And so I thought it would be nice to um, take this opportunity to make videos on all of them. But that does mean that I'm going to have to rush through a little bit more. So there's going to be no top down views. I'm going to have to get through the pace a little bit faster. But um, hopefully that'll allow you to see some absolutely beautiful swords that otherwise we wouldn't get to see on this channel. So first of all, I'm going to start with this sword. Yeah, this is a British Grenadier officer's, so that's an infantry officer's sabre. And because it's a hallmarked hilt, we know exactly when it dates from. So that's the beauty of having silver hallmark hilts is they have the hallmark stamps on them that have uh, years that actually date them precisely. And that's really quite unique because most swords we kind of, we look at the, the pattern maybe and then this is a pre-patterned sword so that wouldn't really even help us. So then we'd look at the fashion and that can sometimes help us date a sword. And we'd look at manufacturer markings, which uh, this, uh, this doesn't have on the blade, but of course, yes, it does have the, um, the stampings on the hilt. And a, manufacturing, um, a manufacturer's label or marking might help us date a sword to some degree, but if they've been in business for a long time, of course, it's not even so helpful. So yeah, silver hallmarked, I can tell you that this sword dates to 1784 to 1785. It's the, the end of one year and start of the other that this hallmark goes from, and it was made in London. So this is a British made Grenadier officer's sword just after the, um, the American Revolution, War of Independence. So it just missed that. Uh, that's an important note actually is to this style of, of sword. So this has the back strap, that's the flat ended back strap that we commonly think of in sort of Austrian swords and, um, and Hungarian swords of, of, of this time. And that's where it was copied from. Before this time, British swords usually had pommels. So the grips were symmetrical and they had a, a symmetrical pommel, you know, some kind of ball pommel of some kind usually, um, or pillow shaped pommel on the end. And in Europe, on the continent, back straps were becoming really popular in, you know, decades before Britain adopted them, something around the 1730s, I believe. But it didn't really catch on in Britain until the 1780s. And so commonly people talk about this kind of hilt as being uh, American Revolutionary period. Uh, it might just about have been. Uh, so this, this kind of shaped back strap and pommel there is a painting, for example, of uh, Banastri Tarleton in 1782 with this type, but that's, that's very early for this. And the re realistically, this probably came in just as the, um, uh, for the most part, became popular as the uh, War of Independence was ending, at least in British service. Okay, so the form of the hilt. So we would typically call this a slotted form, although normally slotted is symmetrical. So this just has a side loop that's reinforced. That's very similar to a lot of uh, spadroons and hangers of this period. Although you'll note this one is a sabre for its sheer length. Curiously, when I saw photos of this sword, because this was offered to me first of all, and um, I thought this was a hanger because typically when you see this kind of asymmetric officer's hilt on a curved blade of this period, it usually has a short blade, something in the region of about 70 centimeters or maybe just over. But this one is actually a good bit longer. This is in full sabre territory, so I will be calling this a sabre. And then on the outside, we have uh, these additional branches. Funnily enough, this means that it's almost a three bar hilt in design, which didn't become popular in Britain until the uh, 1820s. And then on the inside of the guard, we have nothing whatsoever. Now that's actually really, really common. And the reason is, is comfort and usability, is that it's really common to find swords with either protection on the, what we'd call the outside of the guard or the outside of the hand, and nothing or, or a reduced amount on the inside. And that's all to do with comfort in wearing it because a sword has to fit flat onto your uniform side. I'm holding it high here, obviously, so you can see it. But it, <clears throat> it sits in its uh, scabbard, in its uh, belt or baldric, shoulder belt, whatever. 
And if it has a big cumbersome hilt or even a small amount, that can cause the sword to jut out from the uniform, it can wear down the uniform, it can dig into your side, all kinds of problems. And so it's really, really common to have nothing or a reduced inner guard on the inside. And particularly in this kind of 1780s period, going into the 1790s, it was really common to have absolutely nothing there whilst you actually have side loops and sometimes additional branches here. Now, if we now look at those additional branches, there's also an interesting detail here is that these little round sections, these are grenades. So that is the symbol of a grenadier. Now, the grenadiers, the, the symbol is the grenade because traditionally they use grenades and they were essentially a, an assault infantry throwing grenades, grenados. Um, by this time, that wasn't the case anymore. They weren't using grenades, but uh, they maintain that title as basically an elite title. So your grenadiers were usually the the tallest, toughest and bravest of troops, usually. Um, and they consider themselves therefore an elite. They're essentially a hard driving, uh, heavy infantry, if you like. And therefore they did consider themselves an elite and uh, much like the light infantry did, for example. And the grenadiers as a result, not only did they previously have their mitre caps, which was the sort of symbol of the grenadier previously, but they liked to have their curved swords and actually um, before the common soldiers stopped carrying swords, the grenadiers commonly carried a curved blade, not always, but usually a curved blade with, um, with some kind of basket hilt on it. And there are some really good artwork from the, uh, from the mid 18th century showing all the different sort of British grenadier regiments and showing the swords that they're carrying. And those aren't even officers. So this is an officer's sword, but th that artwork is showing common soldiers and the, and the uh, sort of basket hilted hangers in that case or short sabers that they were using. So something not so different to this, just a bit more complex. But you know, by the time of this sword, the 1780s, the common British soldier was not carrying a sword anymore, not even in the Grenadiers. But the officers clearly thought of themselves as something elite and something above the regular line infantry and curved blades, sort of based on a lot of the cavalry sabers that were around at the time, became really popular for officers of the flank companies and the elite troops. So that included grenadiers and light infantry and eventually riflemen and things like that. And so this is a pre-pattern sword because there was no infantry pattern until uh, 1786, which was a spadroon anyway. Although even when the spadroons came in, grenadier officers and light infantry officers, even against regulations, typically kept carrying curved blades until the army gave in. So there's a bit of an overview for you. So a, a very beautiful uh, sword made in 1784 to 1785 for a grenadier officer. And this will have been in service until probably about 1795, 1796, when the new regulations came in for the new spadroons and then sabers just a few years later. It might have served on a little bit beyond that. It could have reached maybe, maybe 1800 or something like that. Okay. Let's look at some specifications. Again, I'm not gonna give you a top-down view because I've gotta get through this stuff as quickly as we possibly can. So this sword is 714 grams. Well, I can tell you right now that's basically the same specification as a Black Fencer 1796 steel infantry saber. So that's quite curious. And if we look at the blade length, it is 81 or just over 81.3 centimeters. So that's just a fraction more than the Black Fencer uh, Sabre, which is really quite curious. So the moment I handled this sword, I thought this feels just like a Black Fencer Steel Sabre. Bear in mind, that's one of the swords I use most commonly in, uh, in my training. And so I'm swinging it around all the time and I picked this up and thought, yep, that's exactly what it feels like. Despite the fact that it, yes, it's got a more complex hilt. But as you can see, um, all the metalwork is quite thin, so it's not an especially heavy hilt, despite having that additional guard. Okay, and now if I shift it out of the way, let's have a look at the curvature. So it's not a wildly curved sword, this one. Curiously, British sabres and uh, hangers and things like that, they weren't very particularly curved until the, the very end of the 18th century, going into the start of the 19th. And probably entirely down to the influence of the Egyptian, Egyptian campaign. Um, and this one has four, just under four centimeters of curve. And again, that puts it so close to the Black Fencer steel training sabers, which is, which is quite amusing. Um, the balance point is, let's have a look. 
Uh, never easy with gloves on. <laughs> Balance point is 14 centimeters, which is curiously exactly the same as a Black Fencer Steel 1796 Infantry. Okay, let's get on to some of the, uh, the distal and profile tapers. So in distal taper, this blade at the shoulder, um, I've got a zero of my thing, and there we go, get it set to millimeters. It is eight millimeters at the shoulder. So, you know, nice and thick. I always find that the British blades that have an eight to nine millimeter shoulder feel the best. Some of the ones that are down at six can often feel pretty meh. <laughs> um, roughly halfway in the blade, we're down to 4.1. In the last kind of 10 centimeters, we're down to 1.4. And right in the tip, it's down to, let's have a look, down to 1.1. .1. So yeah, it comes down to roughly one millimeter at the tip. You'll notice it is fullered all the way to the tip but it has a lot of distal taper, so that it's almost flat here, flatter than I say a lot of spadrons would be, but you can still just about see the ridges of the um, fuller running almost entirely to the tip. Okay, it's rigidity wise, it's a, about a medium, I'm not gonna pressure this blade, but you can tell it's medium flexibility, feels quite nice. Let's look at the um, profile taper. So at the shoulder, it is 3.5 millimeters, halfway point down to three millimeters. And so you can tell this blade, even down here in the last 10 centimeters is still 2.8 centimeters. So it has very little profile taper, but a significant amount of distal taper. So very typical of British swords. And, and there we go. So there's the specification of this one for you. I said I'm having to rush through it a little bit. I hope to give you a bit of context and a bit of history. But what you're looking at here is um, a truly beautiful Grenadier Officer's Sabre that is a bit larger than normal because, again, most of the swords like this I've, I've come across are usually just a little bit shorter. Um, this is a bit beefier, and, um, and I suppose that does fit in nicely with the, uh, the Grenadier um, sort of aesthetic and, and mantra. So there is the uh, yeah, Grenadier Officer's Sword from 1784 to 1785 ran up to about the end of the 18th century. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will quickly get on to the next so we can get through these 10 swords. Thanks for watching and please do subscribe.